have our panel here, the top brass of CII with us, uh, Sanjeev Puri, CV, many thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, ITC, the stock of the moment, the last time I checked, it was up by about 4%, so that should certainly be good news for you, Mr. Puri. But let's talk about the budget on balance now. Many of the things that we talked about in terms of continuity, in terms of stability, especially macroeconomic stability, the budget has clearly and squarely delivered on that. Some of the ideas, and a lot of this will boil down to finally execution as well, but on the job creation front, because again, the compact with industry is what the government is hoping for. Do you believe that this will incentivize industry to hire more? Or do you believe that, look, there has to be a business case for industry to hire. The incentives may not move the needle much. Okay, let me, let me first start by saying it's, it's, uh, it's quite a commendable budget because it's, it's uh, really looked at the issues of jobs as you've spoken about. It's looked at uh, in depth about rural and agriculture, uh, issues of climate change. At the same time, very important focus on, you know, the journey for the next phase of yeah. transformation, next generation reform, a lot of work on ease of doing business, and a lot of, you know, coordination with state and incentivization with state, looking at a lot of important issues of mm. natural resources like water, land so, and, land yeah, and exactly. all of that. So extremely, extremely good. Now coming to this uh, uh, specific question on uh, uh, livelihood. Now, of course, there has to be a, there has to be, no doubt, a, a business case. But what, what is, you know, what is required is that the economic transformation continues, which is what the, what the policy continuity and additional uh, interventions will do. And all these incentives make, make reduce one element of the factor cost. So it does, it does kind of add some impetus to the whole uh, uh, employment situation. But more importantly, I think what is going to lead to more livelihood creation is also the very strong focus on skilling. Yeah. And this whole ideas of, uh, you know, top 500 companies, apprenticeships, and a and lot of other, other schemes are there within, within education and skilling. I mm. think those are very important because today we are also sitting on opportunities which are not filled in a timely fashion because there's a mismatch in skills. skills. So I think that itself on its own will lead to so, job so, creation. So your, your biggest idea or your biggest takeaway from the budget? I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very uh, comprehensive and uh, it, it addresses this whole area of uh, economic transformation for livelihood and for fighting climate uh, emergency quite well within macro stability. And we need to see the roadmap as far as the green transition is concerned. Uh, welcome to Mr. Mukundan as well and Rajiv Mimani, you're back. You stuck your neck out and said you believe this will be the budget that will move on capital gains and that's what's happened. Uh, the expectation was that they wouldn't do both short term as well as long term. Both have happened. Uh, you know, go over the fine print for us and you what uh, to your mind will be the implications and any clarifications that uh, you believe are needed. Yeah. I haven't gone through the fine print as yet, but I can, from whatever I've made out from your budget speech and a few paras here and there, I would say that you can break the tax thing into four sort of markets. One, I think, is there has been a focus on simplification. Uh, so whether it's announcing that they will come out with a new tax code by next year. In, yeah, next six months. Or Vivaad Se, uh, uh, Vishwas, and then on TDS, uh, you know, providing TDS credit and everything else. The reassessment thing is a big thing. So I think yeah. there are many things. The second, obviously, is capital gains, which on long-term capital gains, the rate's gone from 10 to 12.5% on, on listed equity, 15 to 20%. At the same time, uh, uh, for land, uh, it's come from 20% down to 12.5%, although indexation has, has gone been done away with. Been done away with. So the, the, that's the clarification that we were hoping for. And uh, uh, Prashant, Lata Surubhi, uh, Rajiv Memani confirming that, that the indexation uh, for real estate uh, has been done away with, even though the tax has been reduced to 12.5%, the indexation benefit has been done away with. Go ahead, Rajiv. And, and buyback tax, uh, which has been changed, but the way they have said is it will not be treated as capital gains in the hands. Earlier company was paying buyback tax. It will be treated as dividend income. Uh, and the, the, the cost that they have, that will be treated as an expense against that. So I think that's a logical way uh, of, of, uh, of doing that. So I think that on the capital gain side, debt-oriented mutual mm. funds will be happier. So on the capital gain side and on REIT and inbits, there was an anomaly. So yeah. that REIT and inbits now becomes in the same way as listed equity shares. So I think written, earlier the capital gain tenure was three years. Now that comes to one year and the, the rate also changes. So I think overall, I think the second level of change would be in the capital gain area of capital gains. Mm. The third, 
uh, foreign companies. I think yeah. equalization levy of 2% going away. Going away, it came yeah. in 2020. Correct. Not as part of budget, but yeah. it was really later on added. And secondly, foreign company taxation. Being reduced. Being reduced by 5%. So I think that's also, that was a big, big ask from uh, uh, from a lot of people. So I think that will benefit a lot of the uh, foreign companies who have branch setups here uh, or who have got project offices here. And I would say for, fourthly, on the personal tax side, mm. as we have discussed, I think the pivot towards the newer the new. tax regime is there. So standard deduction benefit only available to uh, in the new tax regime. Yeah. There's some changes in slab rates that have happened. I think that's also... Only uh, in the new tax regime, only. that's right. And NPS also, if I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that also is probably only in new tax regime. I'm not... Sure well, on the NPS, she said we're working on the solution and we will arrive at that. Uh, no, she said 10 to, So, what was earlier available to government employees, they right. could get 14 percent, and private sector employees were getting 10 percent. Now, both of them go to 14 percent. So, that gets balanced out. So, I would say that the tax thing I would break into sort of as, as it on direct tax. Mm. If I was to look at it, uh, you know, I would break into four buckets. I think. An, Number of tax changes, honestly, after a long time in a budget, yes, you've seen it's been a heavy, heavy budget for for, for tax. For tax, yeah. And I think some, especially on the simplification side, you know, the reassessment piece and everything, they will be. Uh, and the big thing, Shireen, I think, as as uh, mentioned, I think the government sticking to the macroeconomic stability, yeah, and the focus on jobs and skilling, I think that's really massive, really bold moves mm. uh, uh, on on that big change on that. So I think government clearly recognizing that. This is a big area to solve. Yes, it is a big area. It's a big challenge. But Mr. Mukundan, uh, you know, as far as growth is concerned, in many of these measures that we just spoke of, the hope will be that this will provide uh, the stimulus needed to be able to get us to 7% plus. Uh, enough in the budget uh, uh, to deliver on the growth promise? Yeah, of course. I think uh, what, what the budget has done is budget has focused on fiscal consolidation on one hand but has not let up on some of the issues which we need to address if you have to have a long-term growth. One is, uh, where Sanjeev said fundamentally on the climate change, how do we make the energy transition? There's a clearly a measure of that. There's a measure on R&D. But if you look at agriculture, they, she spoke about agriculture productivity, very, very important yeah. for us for stimulating rural demand. Then the focus on skilling and jobs and internships at the company level, yeah. incentivizing it so that we get more people on the workforce. Mm -hmm. At the same time, focus on MSME, and the focus on infrastructure, because if India has got to be competitive, yeah. we've got to focus on these three factors. And I think all these three are welcome factors. Uh, one more layer which was added was a look east policy. Yeah. I think the look east, in, in some ways you've got to think about it is to say if India is to have inclusive growth, the eastern part of India needs to also have a GDP growth which mm. is commensurate with its potential. Including agriculture potential in East is far higher than the rest of India, and I think yeah. getting that focus right is very, very important. Yes, and of course there was special mention for both Bihar and Andhra Pradesh, which was the expectation: 15,000 crores uh, uh, in FI25 for the state of Andhra Pradesh for Amravati, and of course there was uh, specific uh, uh, allocations for the Polavaram irrigation project as well. But on FDI, and that was again, you know, a piece which uh, is work in progress: simplification to bring in more FDI. She didn't spe specify what the government is thinking of. What, what would you take I, away from that? I, I, it, was a, it was a policy statement. I, I think uh, I've not. I think the details of that is, is still to be seen. But I think some of these steps on uh, foreign company taxation, equalisation, levy are good indicators. Not, they yeah. don't apply to sure. investments. They apply uh, to more to project offices and branches. But yeah, I, I would say that the uh, investors should look at just the macroeconomic thing. You know, the FDI, the Fiscal deficit coming down, borrowings coming down, you know, I think broad themes are very strong. And the broad themes continue to be the focus areas of the government, whether it was the five schemes or the nine priorities, it's pretty much a continuation of what the government has been focusing on CB. Uh, you know, the two, three ideas that you like, that you hope the government will build on and will be important from an execution standpoint. I think one thing which uh, uh, I see having gotten carried forward is uh, the focus on how the private sector is being given space to participate and uh, in the growth uh, in the growth story 
So it's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, now focus on the private sector to come in. There's a lot of space given to the private sector to come in. So it's an entire story of how do we build trust uh, and get the private sector to take, take the benef benefit of the incentives being given on jobs, on skilling. Mm. So you, you talk about skill, skill gaps and you talk about yeah. you are not getting people as well as you're talking about an employment issue. So that's where I see a ro lot of role which the private sector can play, and I hope that they will. The second part is, uh, you know, very interestingly, I found one of the things that we have talked uh, about in your show earlier is the role of states. While mm. we talked about two states, yeah. but it has also talked about how it incentivizes states to participate Especially in the next in the generation, next generation reforms, reforms. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a very, very interesting takeaway for me because we need that to happen. And third, and, uh, and, and lastly, is the rural side. I think the focus, uh, uh, focus on the rural infrastructure, when, the, when we see the capex, uh, the, the quality of the capex spent mm. on agriculture, irrigation, I think that would, that, would, uh, that would be one of my key takeaways from the budget. Enough uh, here to drive consumption. I mean, you know, uh, if you move to the new tax regime, the savings account to about 17,500 uh, is what the finance minister mentioned. But do you believe that on balance with everything that's been put in place, enough to stimulate consumption further? So, you know, the ultimate solution for consumption is, is actually the, what's been done in the past is a virtuous cycle of investment, employment, consumption. And I think that's where the predominant focus of this budget is, and that's what, you know, we, we've always said that. And we had said that some bit of uh, relief given, uh, given the uh, context today. So there's been some relief provided in uh, income tax. And I think with the, with the measures that are being taken in agriculture, the mm -hmm. measures being taken in skilling, a lot of that should hopefully benefit tran uh, transfer to the rural area, the investments in infrastructure. I think that should, that should itself uh, stimulate demand. The, the, we, we should also see the lagged impact of all the investment-led growth because yeah. there is a, you know, there's always a lag between the investment and the consumption yeah. coming. With passage of time, I think the benefits of that should start coming in also. And uh, fortunately, the, you know, the weather gods are still <laughs> kind so far this year on balance. So we, that itself should uh, provide a, a positive for the rural economy. Of course, that's a serious monitorable because yeah. no, it's difficult to predict yeah. today. But so far, it's, it appears to be on a positive uh, compared to the past. Ho holding holding up so holding far, up. the weather gods. Mr. Bukundan, before I let you go, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the many measures, and as I pointed out, some are sp specific announcements, but many will be work in progress, whether at the central government level or in coordination with industry as well as states. Uh, you know, do you believe that, you know, we had the smart city project, for instance. Today, the government is talking about urban cities and, uh, you know, uh, improving infrastructure and so on and so forth as far as uh, cities with a population of uh, 30 million plus and so on and so forth. So do you believe that, uh, is there a fear or a concern that, uh, uh, you know, we might get lost as far as the execution roadmap is concerned? Intent, strong on intent, but perhaps execution may be a cause for concern. So I, I, I think in terms of uh, making sure our urban bodies are much more, uh, let's say, vibrant, much more able to execute on the ground, I think is one thrust this government has brought on table. But I think it's a work in progress because, it, you know, at the first level he said go to states, and when you go to cities, it's one more level, level below. And I think it's going to be something which both center and state have to work together. Well, yes, a lot of coordination and uh, uh, collaborative federalism is the need of the hour, not perhaps uh, as much competitive federalism as we've uh, gotten used to over the last few years. But, gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. I would imagine that uh, much more will be revealed in the fine print as you go over that. So we will uh, look forward to, uh, to speaking with you again. But thanks very much uh, for your time. That's the view here. Uh, industry, as always, confident that the budget has put enough on the table to spur growth uh, and feeling good about uh, private investment picking up from here on. The markets at this point in time, it's a 600-point drop on the Sensex. Mm. Uh, well, about 575 points uh, drop on the Sensex and reacting, as we pointed out, to the changes that have come in on capital gains. But uh, the mood in industry continues to be sanguine on balance as it was ahead of the budget. Lata. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Shireen. Uh, mood may be uh, positive for industrialists. Uh, hopefully, that will make them employ more people, which is what uh, the CEA and uh, the finance minister seem to want. But there is